Ensure you have connected and prepared for testing before you continue. You will need to prepare the Phonics FP35. Open the lid and connect the hearing aid to the coupler by using the small tubing at the end. Adjust as necessary so that the hearing aid microphone is placed into the centre circle of the loudspeaker as shown. Turn on the hearing aid and close the lid. On the screen, in the top left, it should read SPL for sound pressure level. To change this, press the menu button. A small menu on the screen will be displayed, and on the menu display is Gain. Change the option on the row by pressing left or right arrow keys once. It now indicates on the small menu display SPL. Press the menu button to enter the changes on the screen. It now reads on the screen in the top left SPL. Above the F2 button on the screen should read Curve 1. If not, press F2 repeatedly until Curve 1 is shown. Above the F4 button on the screen should read Digital Speech, shown as DIG SPCH. If not, press F4 repeatedly until Digital Speech is shown. The source should be 65 dB. If not, Press the up and down arrow keys to adjust the level as necessary. Press the start-stop button to create a response curve of the hearing aid. Press start-stop to freeze the curve. This is the ConEvans FM Genie system. There are many combinations available and we would recommend reading the user manual to become more familiar with all the features here applicable. The combination used here is the direct audio input method using a connecting lead and lapel microphone. This is the FM Genie transmitter. By removing the battery cover on the back, we can see transmission power selection switch marked as SR short range and LR long range. Normally, for hearing aid, it's set to SR, particularly in an environment where there are many other personal FM users or other FM wireless systems. If the environment is free from other systems, the LR can be used to improve the operating distance and reduce the opportunity of external interference. Replace the battery cover. Turn the transmitter on and the LCD screen will display the following information. The number shown on the screen, which is the frequency channel. On the right is the battery condition shown in four bars. On the left is the antenna signal, which is not showing any level bars and a red LED is flashing together, indicating that there is no antenna connection. Connect the lapel microphone. The antenna signal on the screen displays four bars and the red LED will stop, indicating a good connection. Turn the transmitter off. This is the FM Genie transmitter. By removing the battery cover on the back, you can see a number of settings. An activation control is available for the independent adjustment of the treble and bass controls, which is normally not required and left in the cancel position. The active position enables the treble and bass controls to affect the output frequency response curve. This is the low and high selection switch. By using the manufacturer's adjusting tool, you can change the level of audio output, depending on what you're connecting. In this case, for a hearing aid, using a standard direct audio input lead, it should be set to low LO. This position displays a Europlug signal on the LCD screen. Viewed from the back, you can see a label marked ENVVOL, environmental volume. Turning the genie to the side, you can see the environmental volume control. When not in use, turn the volume to zero. On the opposite side is the gain control for the audio output, which should be adjusted down initially. Turn the receiver on, and the LCD screen will display the following information. The number shown on the screen, which is the frequency channel, which matches the transmitter channel 38 in this demonstration. On the right is the battery condition, shown in four bars. The Europlug signal, indicating the audio output, is set to LO. LO is displayed. 
On the left is the antenna signal, which is not showing any level bars, and a red LED is flashing together. This is indicating that no FM signal is being received, and usually the transmitter is not turned on, or an incorrect channel is being used. By turning on the transmitter microphone, the FM signal strength on the screen displays four bars. Using a direct audio input lead, connect into the Genie receiver. With the hearing aid connected to the coupler and placed onto a soft surface, carefully connect to the hearing aid. Place the lapel microphone of the transmitter onto the centre circle of the loudspeaker, as shown, using the elastic band to help hold it in place. Note, elastic bands are only to be used for holding lapel microphones and not the coupler, as this causes damage to the test chamber. The FP35 has two additional couplers, the HA1 and the calibration coupler. These placed together, or a Type-C battery, have similar acoustic properties to the HA2 coupler, currently connected to the hearing aid. To give the most accurate frequency response, these can be used as shown. Be aware that if not used, the response curve may have a small discrepancy in the lower frequency region, which can sometimes be considered not essential. Close the lid, ensuring the lapel microphone lead is positioned so that it comes out from the lower corner of the test chamber, as shown, to minimise damage to the lead. Press the F2 button. Above the F2 button on the screen, it should read Curve 2. If not, press F2 repeatedly until Curve 2 is shown. Above the F4 button on the screen should read Digital Speech, shown as DIG SPCH. If not, press F4 repeatedly until Digital Speech is shown. The majority of digital hearing aids are non-linear, and therefore source should be set to 65 dB. However, if programmed to behave linearly, source should be set to 70 dB. Press the up and down arrow keys to adjust the level as necessary. Press the start-stop button to create a response curve of the personal radio system. On the receiver, adjust the gain control slowly clockwise whilst observing the frequency response on the screen. Increase the gain control until the curves match as closely as possible. Press start-stop to freeze the curve. You should have matched the level and shape of the hearing aid to the personal FM system. You can continue to create a third curve to observe the output of the personal radio system at 80 dB. However, due to the increase in wide dynamic range compression, WDRC, and other variables inherent in the hearing aid and the personal FM system, this curve is not as informative and usually masks the two comparative curves when regularly checking a system, making it less clear. Press print to save the frequency response curves for future comparisons. It is possible to save the responses to a computer via a serial connection lead, and an example of this is shown in the extras section.